Our scene today in the gospel is one that we, of course, see every year at this time and is familiar to us. But do you understand why it is that these holy women, these three, are the ones who are to discover the tomb being empty? Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, these women who are at the foot of the cross, now come to the tomb on Sunday morning because they come as a true act of love and devotion to our Lord. It was the Jewish custom that each, if a, if a family member or a close um, person to you dies, the respectful thing to do was that they would anoint the bodies with oils and fragrant perfumes and spices before laying it in the tomb. But on Good Friday, when our Lord died, this was not possible. Remember the scene at Calvary. They were there and they had to ask Pilate to take the body down quickly because soon the Sabbath was going to come upon them. When nightfall came that evening, they were not allowed to do any more work. And so they needed to be able to place our Lord properly in a tomb, give him that respectful burial before they ran out of time. And so it was they got our Lord down from the cross and they brought him to the tomb and they laid him in there and rolled the stone in front of it. The next day was not only the Sabbath, but the great Sabbath of the Passover, the Pasch. And as they went and they prayed, as they would in those times, uh, any Sabbath and any Paschal Sabbath especially, they moreover found themselves in a great point of mourning and waiting to do this important duty for our Lord. It was only now, after that Saturday had passed, that they arrived and the sun rose on Sunday morning. But the holy women, they wasted no time in doing so. It was the very first thing that they were about to do. They got up as soon as dawn broke, they left their homes, and they came right to the tomb of our Lord. And when they arrived, they were completely in shock because they had forgotten the words our Lord had taught. They expected our Lord to be in death like anyone else would be that death would be permanent and that the body would be there to lay in rest until the last day. But coming, they found the stone rolled back and soon they saw the darkened tomb with light spilling into it and more astonishingly with light emanating out of it. And arriving, they see what they think is a young man clothed in white. In reality, it is not a man, it is an angel who sits there by the spot where our Lord once lay. And he is the one who heralds in our Lord's resurrection. All of it has come full circle. When Christ died, the earth quaked, the world darkened, and was plunged into sadness. Now, our Lord rises, the earth quakes once again at that moment, the sun shines brightly on the day, light fills up the tomb, and sadness is replaced with great joy for those who mourn. Moreover, it is the angel who announces the moment, much as the angels had come to announce the incarnation of Christ before. In fact, God lays out three angelic heraldings of salvation, and they all took place at the same time. Long before our Lord's resurrection, the Israelites found themselves cast into bondage because they had been unfaithful. 
because they had sinned and they had fallen away from God as a nation. They were cast out of Israel and placed under the rule of the Egyptians. And after their time of bondage had been nearly completed, Moses has come to be their deliverer. And it is revealed to Moses that, it, that they must offer a great sacrifice of an unspotted lamb and then take the blood of the lamb and smear it upon the woods of their doors so that when that night falls they may be spared the plague that is to come the slaying of all the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt. The Israelites do this. They are faithful to the words of Moses and the instructions from heaven. And that night, it is an angel which comes to earth, the angel of death. And that angel sweeps through the land of Egypt, and those with the mark on the door find themselves spared his wrath. At the light of day, the next day, Pharaoh wakes up and immediately sets the Israelites free. They are delivered from <coughs> their bondage into the world of redemption. The sacrifice took place on a Friday. And when it is computed out from the Jewish calendar to the, the modern calendar, it would be March 25th. Many years later, there is a young woman who, unlike so many at the time, dedicates her entire life from her youth to the service of God. She is schooled at the temple. She is to live at the temple. She is never to marry, but gives herself for her whole life in perpetual virginity in the service of God. It is Mary, the Blessed Virgin, and she is the chosen one and on a Friday, she is in prayer. And because she is preparing herself for the Passover. And it is there on that day that an angel comes down from heaven and announces the incarnation of the God man to her. Sacrifice is necessary then too. It is a sacrifice of her will. That wonderful fiat, be, let, thy, let it be done according to thy word for the salvation of men. And he would be born into a world when it is at its darkest and in a time of the year when it is darkest. And now we find ourselves again coming through this last week. And on a Friday, before the Passover, the Pasch, the Lamb of God is slain. His blood is placed upon the wood of the cross. And when death is conquered, at the end of that Passover day, light again returns to the earth. And the angel again announces to the holy women this joy, the joy of victory and of salvation all over. Three angelic events, three points of salvation, three points of divine light, full circle we have come. Mark this, this mark of the circle is the mark of the divine. It is the mark of eternity. And now, with our Lent completed, and today being the feast, the Paschal feast, we have come full circle too. Our celebration of the birth of our Lord in the Nativity was a point of great joy and triumph 
and exaltation. And we carry through that season with that spirit, but soon after, it quickly turned from joy to sorrow, from, from light to darkness, the darkness of Lent. We rejoiced at his birth, but we quickly realized why Christ needed to become man. It was because we had sinned. And so in that recognition, we darkened ourselves with the ashes. We recognized our sins and we do penance for them during that time. And when it had reached its culmination, and finally the sacrifice of Christ is over, now joy can return again. Because our sacrifices have not been in vain. And Christ's sacrifice has brought us eternal life, salvation, presented to us all anew. Our sins and eternal death, he has conquered them by raising himself out of the tomb. We come full circle and like the holy women at the tomb. We are filled with great hope that one day soon we might see our Lord again. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.